All right, hey, what's up, guys? Coach Matt, play fast football. We're going to do a video today uh, based on where number three is and how it could dictate uh, the type of coverages you, that you are playing in your three by one adjustments. All right, so we'll just take a quick look at some of those things. Remember to check out some of our partners, Dome Hats, Headwear's uh, company we use at the high school I'm at and with Play Fast Football. They have an amazing online custom hat builder where you can generate and design your own hat, change the style, change it from snapback to fit it to Velcro, anything you want, change the colors. All right, completely customizable. You design your own hat. Every hat has a story. Make sure you let Dome help you tell the story of your hat. Baker Sporting Goods, the company we use for uh, spirit packs, our uniforms are distributed by them. I get my coach's gear uh, from Baker Sporting Goods. Anytime we're going to do an online team store for fans or teachers or students or anybody, we use Baker, so make sure you check them out. Just Play Football, uh, more powerful presentation, digital software, taking your program to the next level. Uh, I think it's the best play drawing tool on the market. If I'm going to do any clinics or webinars, it's what I use to draw and diagram plays, so make sure you t uh, check out Just Play. Uh, Game Strat, sideline replay system we use. If you're looking for a highly reliable, highly affordable system, check out uh, GameStrat, great company, great customer service. We absolutely love them. Difference USA, the ultimate striking machine. Uh, we have one that we use in the offseason uh, that we set up in our weight room, and you can change the coil, change the tensions, and make it harder to strike, so you get thousands of reps without needing a partner. So check out Difference USA. High and tight ball security training aid uh, that is used with your skill players. You can use it. Uh, in their everyday drills, you have to hold the ball in the proper position, high and tight, with the proper pressure. It has sensors inside. When the ball is in the right position, you will hear a beep, so you get an auditory response right away, auditory feedback. You hear that beep, you know you got the ball in the right position. You go through agility drills or any drills that you're doing and you lose the beep, you know that somehow, some way, the wrist is too low, the elbow came out, forearm came away, points of pressure are not right, it's not high and tight where it needs to be, so make sure you check them out. Stand Perfect, which is a training aid we use with Younger players, and in the spring we use it to get multiple reps, getting kids in consistent and repeatable stances. So if you're working with your old line and you wanted guys on the left side working in a left heel toe stagger and guys on the right side working in a right heel, heel toe stagger, you can set up the stand perfect exactly how you want them. Kids jump right in. They know where their feet go. No more buzzwords having to tell them six inches back, four inches outside, move your back foot here, your front foot there. Put them down exactly where you want them. Kids jump in. You get a bunch of reps. You can use it. We use it with wide receivers, we use it with safeties. Sometimes I use it with my quarterbacks to work on footwork on our, on our meshes in the run game. So uh, baseball, softball, golf, football, so many different ways to use this stand perfect training aid. Make sure you check them out. All right, so we're going to take a look at, at how, uh, uh, where a number three is could change the types of coverages that we play, right? So this is something that normally you would look at uh, on film, something you would try and explain to your guys off of film, how you could possibly uh, have players that could make their checks based on where number three is, but you need players that understand uh, formations, they understand what you're trying to do, where the issues are. So for us as a middle of the field open team, split field coverage team, uh, and being a quarters based toolbox team, where three is is going to kind of dictate the coverages that we like to play and how we like to play those because the first issue you're always going to run into if you're a quarters team is technically the Mike linebacker on the front side has to play three vertical. If three is an attached tight end or three is somebody that's in the core and you are okay with your Mike linebacker playing three vertical, then you could play your core's coverages to the front, leave your weak safety to the back, and then your Mike is responsible for three vertical. I'm not the biggest fan of doing that when Mike has a primary inside uh, run gap to fit. I think with a lot of the RPOs that are out there now, there's ways to read the mic and run, <clears throat> run three vertical while running some type of ISO scheme, doubling to the wheel, locking the front side, and now if the mic runs with three vertical, they can get inside zone. If Mike fits the A-gap, three's going vertical, and if you're middle of the field open uh, and you're not playing three vertical with one of your safeties, then obviously you can get into trouble. So uh, the thing you need to look at is do you need to borrow the backside safety and bring them over to the front side, okay, to play three vertical so that you can maintain your normal quarters toolbox principles on the front side but that's going to leave you locked man to man on the backside. All right, so you've got to be able to pick and choose what you want to do and, and why you want to do it. So for us, one of the things we look at, if three gets outside the tackle box and we feel like three is an immediate vertical threat, all right, that we don't want the mic to carry, okay, and we feel like three is in a position where he doesn't like to go backside, all right, he likes to stay frontside, 
we're okay with playing a stress or a rolled concept where we're going to kick the backside safety over to play three vertical. All right, if we're not worried so much about weak side runs and having to get that weak safety back. Now, if we're if we're if we're stressing or poaching off a three and three comes back in a counter scheme, we should be able to gain this safety. All right, but when three gets outside the tackle box, the first thing we got to think about is he is a vertical threat. I don't know if I want my mic on a vertical threat outside the tackle box. All right, but while he's that wide off 11 personnel guy, there still is some threat to um, two back gaps or, or gap schemes, duo schemes. All right, plays where he is still in the core and he can block, and now they can still get to some possible one back power counter stuff. All right, or some other GT pull stuff. So you've got to be able to fit two back runs. All right, but when three gets removed, uh, we are okay if we allow our backside safety or our frontside safety to make coverage calls. We're okay with borrowing the backside safety when three starts to get outside the tackle box. Number one, he's an immediate vertical threat. We got to uh, honor that. And number two, a lot of times if he's out there, we may not see the runs coming back inside. So we could play a rolled coverage and pull him the weak safety over. We could play. Um, we could play a, uh, a poach coverage where we can still play palms on one and two, still get our three on two out here, and then poach for three vertical to this side here. But we don't want the mic having to carry that. All right, so when he's out there, it's okay in our opinion to play, in my opinion. I like our kids poaching. I like our kids rolling. We feel good. Even though we're going to have to lock up man-to-man -man here and man-to-man -man on the back, we feel good that we're not going to get as many of the hard ball counter runs or gap runs coming back, all right, based on three being outside the tackle box. Now, the other thing that the guys on the front side need to kind of understand is if he gets outside the tackle box and the runs start to favor stretch or outside run, we've got to be able to fit those. And we did a poor job in the spring, uh, poor job coaching in practice and poor job talking to our kids about the position of that player and what we may need to do. Now, when he gets more into the core, okay, and he gets himself inside the tackle box there, now one of the things that we're looking at is we're not so sure if he can be the immediate vertical threat, especially if we have the three and the five to that side. He's going to have to release really wide to get himself vertical. So if he's not the vertical threat here, all right, that he is when he's removed, but when he comes in here, he has a tendency of going back to the weak side, all right, so counter runs or things like that. We're going to want to try and play some coverages where we leave the weak safety on the back side so that we can kind of feel like we've got the numbers to handle the gap schemes or runs where that number three is now coming back to us. Okay, so, you know, there's times where depending on who we're playing and what we're playing, we might play our mixed concept. We might put our dollar or our Sam outside of two free safety over three if that split is good enough for us to get to. All right, we might X out the one and play our mix or mini concept, whatever you want to call it. All right, there's times where we sky this down and we leave the mic on three vertical. All right, if we feel like from that position, game film wise, if three is not a vertical threat, we feel like we can sky the safety down or we can cloud the corner or we can do something to give us a D-gap weak side force player while also understanding, all right, that the vertical of three is going to have to be handled by the Mike linebacker. And as an offense, that's why I always like to try and use three vertical from inside the core because I think it affects the, the coverage structure a little bit more when it's more 20 personnel than it is 11 wide off. I think when it's 20 and he's inside the core, you'll see more eight-man fronts and you get the opportunity to get that, that – uh, sniffer down the middle, all right, unless teams start to close the middle and play one high structures, which some teams will do. They'll play eight man front one high structures to it. Okay, so for us that, you know, the position of that number three allows us to kind of dictate how we want to play the multitude of coverages. All right, so that if we feel like three is not that vertical threat, now by leaving the weak safety back here, now I get on the back side, I get my ability to play sky I get my ability to play Hawk, which is more like a quarters deal. We get the ability to play Cone, which is more like a bracket deal. We get the ability to play Hard, which is more like a cover two deal. So it opens so many more options for us to the single side. The issue is now we've got to figure out how are we going to handle 
three going vertical. If we stay within our quarters toolbox, the mic is going to have to play in vertical. Okay, so that's something that you need to take a look at. And I think who three is and where three is is always going to uh, try to get you to dictate on defense the coverages that you are starting to use, the coverages that you are um, starting to allow your kids. So for us, um, the, the longer our kids have been here and the longer they play football, the more we play base concepts and allow them by formation to put us in what they think is the best coverage based on the picture what they're seeing. Okay, so I would expect my guys to, you know, play some type of deal where, you know, we are going to um, play the coverage off the split of number three. So three outside the tackle box, we want a certain deal call. Three inside the tackle box, we want a different deal call. All right, so there's other ways that you can alleviate some of those issues, you know, some wrinkles where you could possibly, you could take your free safety, all right, you could take your free safety and you could play a quarters concept out here, put your dollar outside, put your free safety back inside, all right, and then you could kick your backers away a little bit and bring your weak side safety over to kind of play off of the number three there, all right, so where now you're getting an issue where the, the, the weak safety is almost playing three man-to-man, -man. you've bumped your backers away, you've went to a quarter scheme on the front side to get outside leverage, all right, sometimes you might want to do that, like if three, this wouldn't be the, the, the worst deal, if three was set outside and we wanted to play this type of deal because we now think maybe we're going to get some more outside runs, so now we set the weak safety here, we kick the coverage away, essentially he becomes a curl flat player, he plays off the half, and then the Mike has to relate to uh, where the tailback is and what else there is in coverage. All right, but if we play the weak safety here off three and we play the dollar outside in a quarter theory and we're getting outside runs, we feel like we're gonna get them forced because of our leverage there. So now we feel like we can add two bodies in the alley for those runs that are coming outside because teams have wanted to put uh, the, the fullback, Y off, whatever it is, outside of tight end, and now when he's outside of tight end, it's more of a three vert outside run deal, so that's one of the adjustments you can make. You could certainly, um, you know, you could certainly lock the outside depending on what they're trying to do. You take your free safety, and you can lock the outside, and then you can bump the dollar down, bump the mic down, bump the will down, bring the backside weak safety over to play three vertical, and now give yourself almost more of a 4-3 look, a 7 in the box look, all right, to where the backers underneath are relating to the tailback. Okay, we are locking this man, and now maybe we would play some type of bracket deal where dollar might be just outside of three, safety inside of three, three out, dollar's got him, safety fits, three in, safety's got him, dollar fits. All right, there's so many different adjustments you can make, but I think the biggest key is understanding that the adjustments you're going to make are going to be made off of where three is and how that might change some things. The, the three high safety stuff that is coming to play so much now, all right, makes things really cool because now you can play some lighter boxes with the tight front stuff. You can stay with your normal deals on the outside. You can take the middle safety and play them as an extra linebacker off three vert, and then you can still stay with your weak safety on the backside and get all of those coverages on the backside. All right, while playing a lighter box theory, you can play double four eyes if you want to with a tight end or a C-gap area player. I don't really like the four eye with leverage, down block on the four eye, down block on the mic, but I, I, I'm gonna gain that middle safety so you can still get away with playing uh, tight front stuff. But the three high safety stuff has made it a little bit easier in my opinion to play some of these Y off deals and some of these three by one deals where uh, you know, now we're not really worried as much where three is. We're going to take care of three vertical with that middle safety, and then he's also going to become a quasi-linebacker in the run fit. So there's so many ways to do it nowadays, but I think the biggest thing, especially as a split field, middle of the field open team, we look at all the time is trying to get our kids to understand the coverages we want to play based on where three is. If three's outside a tackle box, we like these deals. If three's inside a tackle box, we like these deals. And then trying to get your kids to understand the why you would do that. Why are we okay skying or leaving the weak side safety on the backside when three is in the core? Why are we okay with running the mic 
on three vertical from the core, but as soon as three gets removed, especially if three is outside of tackle box or if it's three, ten personnel with three wideouts, we're not putting a mic on three vertical definitely in that situation. And now we've got to figure out, all right, how many hardball runs with the quarterback do they have using the tailback as a blocker? Are they a ten personnel team or can they get to twenty personnel runs with the quarterback? That's going to dictate how we want to handle the, you know, the front side trip stuff. All right, so, so many different ways to do it, but I think one of the things to look at all the time is where number three is, who number three is, and how to teach your kids to play those adjustments off of the position of number three so you don't get caught in a bad call. Three comes out, he's outside of tight end, your kids know they want to play this structure. Three comes out, he's in the core as a back, they know that they want to play this structure, and then you're explaining to them why, based on where that number three is, why you would like to do those things. All right, so hopefully... Uh, that helps you guys. I know we've done some other videos on 3 by one adjustments in quarters and our quarters toolbox and how we play it from our split field coverage. I know that there's tons of other videos out there on how, you know, the saving tree and those guys, how they play stump and stubby and, uh, and, and you know, some other concepts to 3 by one uh, But for us, it's trying to get our kids into a situation where 3 by one we play the coverage based on who 3 is and where 3 is, and then we give our kids a toolbox to kind of fix everything in our base structure based on that alignment of number three. All right, so I appreciate everything you guys do for Play Fast Football. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. Turn your notifications on so you know every time that we do a video, you'll know you'll get a notification every time I go on YouTube Live, you'll get a notification. All right, make sure you leave a comment. If it's a football-related comment, I will always try and respond to the comment. If it's a comment about a video and I can do the video, I will always respond to that comment. Thumbs up, thumbs down. If you like it or don't like it, it helps us understand uh, what we need to do with not only the content, but maybe how I present the information or something that you appreciate or something you don't appreciate. So thanks for everything you do for PlayFast. Uh, if you're playing this week or tonight in the spring, good luck to you. Hopefully everybody else got out of spring healthy. Now you're getting ready for summer workouts, summer training, going into fall ball. So uh, thanks for everything you do for me. Thanks for being a subscriber to PlayFast Football. Remember, you won't play well until you play fast, and I will see you guys next time.